Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I got a really cool hardware to show you guys, which is this 64 megapixel camera for the Raspberry Pi. So let's check it out. First, I wanna thank ArduCam for sending this over to me and everything we talk about will be linked down in the description below. What we're gonna be checking out today is their 64 megapixel Raspberry Pi camera, which uses the CSI interface. Now, they're no stranger to this. ArduCam actually has been around for quite some time making these cameras before. And the last product that they had is this 16 megapixel autofocus camera. You guys probably seen it around. And now with their new product, the 64 megapixel Raspberry Pi camera with autofocus as well. Now I've had the liberty of playing with this for the past couple of days and I gotta say I am thoroughly impressed. Now don't hear from me I'm gonna show you examples and everything but we are gonna go through all the specs to see if you guys are interested in purchasing this product. Now I also did receive a 16 megapixel camera from them as well which I am actually gonna be doing a video on this for my Octopi so I could do a really nice time lapse of 3D printed stuff so that video will be coming as well but for now the 64 megapixel. They do have a lot of things going on, so we're gonna jump over to the desktop and I'm gonna read out the specs to you guys and kind of explain it and go through it a little bit. So this way we are on the same page with everything and I don't give you the wrong numbers. So to start off, this is the ArduCam's website. I'll leave a link down in the description below for it. And this talks about the 64 megapixel autofocus. I would actually check out a lot of their stuff that they have on there, especially some of the footages that they took and the pictures that they took, but yeah. Going down the list, as far as the specs go, the optical size is 9.25 diagonal. That's the sensor size itself. Uh, the focus type can be manual or automatic. Um, I prefer the auto, it actually works really well. Um, you could actually do continuous autofocus on this, but it's not as uh, sharp, it's not as fast. Like my camera right here, if I was to move my hand right like that, it'll automatically auto focus and focus back out to me. It's not as fast as like normal cameras like this, but it does work. It is still experimental according to their codes, but maybe they'll make it faster in the future. Now their sensor resolution, which is the 64 megapixels, is this resolution, the 9152 times 6944. Honestly, this is slightly smaller than a 64 megapixel. I think 64 megapixels was like 9600 or something, 9652 instead of 9152. So they're off like, it's more squared than it is uh, wide. Now their video modes is pretty interesting to me because I'm actually gonna show you a comparison to my camera and to that in a sec. But the video mode for Raspberry Pi, and this is important, uh, it's 1080 by 30 frames per second, then you have 720, 60 frames per second, and then 480, you could do 60 or 90 frames per second, which means you could do slow-mo. Now, their camera module actually supports these different modes, which is 720 by 120 frames. And that's really slow-mo. And then 920 by 1080, uh, 60 frames, and then so forth and so forth. And the biggest reason what I find, which I never actually asked them for explanation, but kind of makes sense to me, is that the Raspberry Pi CSI-2 interface does not have the bandwidth to transmit that type of data over to the Raspberry Pi. And for the Raspberry Pi to compute it and convert it into a video, that's another struggle in itself. But I believe that uh, maybe on the CM4, it might get better performance because it's got four channels instead of two as the Raspberry Pi 4. But still, the limitations, I believe, is the bandwidth. While the camera can do 120 frames at 720, just the bandwidth alone going down that ribbon cable to the Raspberry Pi, it, that's where the struggle is, I think. That's where I believe the limitations are. Now, we have color filtering, which is QBC. Now, I'm not gonna get into too much detail about uh, QBC, but a lot of new sensors use it now, especially more Samsung phones. A lot of the phones you probably have, which has like maybe 48 megapixels or 30 megapixels, they're using the QBC color filter, which you could Google and figure out what it is, but if you're gonna do a comparison to my DSLR, um, the DSLR will still have better resolution or better image quality versus anything that's QBC at a different uh, megapixel ratio. To break it down for you a little bit easier, just put it this way. Um, 48 megapixels in QBC is equivalent to 12, maybe 15 megapixels to a DSLR. Even though the megapixels are different, you might get a bigger picture, like the resolution size on the 64 megapixel picture might be bigger. 
the 12 megapixel camera or the 50 megapixel camera has more detail because we got a bigger sensor that could capture more and we're using a different technology which is not QBC. So you can read more about it, you can google it and figure that out but more likely the 64 megapixel is really high quality but compared to a DSLR 64 megapixel, the DSLR 64 megapixel will do much better. All right. So moving down, supported platforms is Raspberry Pi 4 and the CM4 for the 64 megapixel version. And I do see this as a limitation. If you're using this same camera module uh, for the Pi 2, Pi 3, CM3, 0, or 0, 02, it will reduce down to super pixel resolution of 16 megapixels. So you're not going to get the full 64 megapixels because it requires a lot of compilation. I'm telling you, I'm using the Raspberry Pi 4, 1 gigabyte and it cannot do video very well. Um, anything else like pictures and stuff like that, it'll work on the one gigabyte, but you do need a Raspberry Pi 4 with more than one gig. You could use the two gig model, four gig or eight gig. Right now I'm currently filming and getting everything off a four gig model, but when I did earlier tests on a one gig model, I wasn't able to do all the stuff because it was running out of memory. It does require uh, a specific setup on this guy to get it to work, so you do need to download the drivers, install some software. And one of the biggest thing is that it requires you to have 512 memory in the video, which if you have a one gigabyte Raspberry Pi, that's half the memories, which causes it to be a struggle. Anyway, moving on. I do see that uh, being a, uh, an issue if you're gonna try to use this on a Pi 3. It will work only in 16 megapixels. Now, it does have focus, which is an 8 centimeter infinite focus, 8 centimeter to infinite focus. That means it could focus up to 8 millimeters. F-stop or focal stop 1.8, which is actually not too bad. 1.8 is pretty good. Especially, uh, what that means is um, if I put my hand really close to the camera, you're going to get a really nice blur in the background. That's the 1.8 focal. Uh, the focal length is 5.1. That means the closest I can have an object is 5.1 millimeters away. Viewing angle is 84 degrees, which is not too bad. Dimensions is 25 by 24. Oh, okay. This is the same dimensions as the Raspberry Pi's version of their camera. And the screw holes are exactly in the same spot. So if you have a case for the camera for the old versions of Raspberry Pi, this will fit right away onto it. You don't have to buy new cases. It just works. Uh, shutter type is rolling and output format is JPEG, YUV, RGB, and RAW 10. So you could get raw images from this if you needed to. Which if you are planning to use this as a camera yeah it works really well just think about your cell phone having 64 megapixels or 48 megapixels and you're taking cell phone pictures you know all day long you're using your phone to take pictures this is a very similar camera so you're not the, the quality is right there in par with what you would have in your cell phone and i think that is about it they have different kits if you want to purchase it but Let's jump in and check out this camera. So I currently have my terminal open. We do need to issue commands and push commands to get this uh, thing to work. So what I'm going to be showing you is basically a um, viewfinder with continuous autofocus. Okay, so don't worry about the resolutions because we're using it as a viewfinder. I'm not using 9000 pixels or anything, but I'm going to show you exactly the quality and you can see it live right away. So I'm going to be mirroring the screens. I'll show you in a sec. So. You see that autofocus? That just kicked in. And this is unedited, uncolored, un whatever I did to it. So if I want to apply some color corrections, you'll see it like right now. So it'll be compared to what I have in my camera. And it's very, very similar. Now we don't have a mic on this Raspberry Pi, so I'm just, you know, copying off the frames. But you could see this is more of a squared resolution right now compared to my 1080 uh, that I'm recording off the camera. And you could get 1080 video on this but it'll just like shrink the top and the bottom to make it look like my camera so it, you're not really losing much it's it's very similar the camera that i'm using right now has a little bit wider angle because i am using a wider angle lens but comparatively you should be able to get pretty much the same footage i just put the viewfinder to be more squared so i capture as much as i can so with that being said uh yeah the quality is pretty good i'm getting 30 frames per second and yeah this looks really, really good. I'm gonna put a like a little thing on the bottom left like I normally do so you can see my face and what you're seeing over here at the same time so you can see the difference. But yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Now, if I want to take a picture, all right, I am gonna close this out. I am gonna capture a picture and I need to output this to a file called pi.jpg. 
all right? And I do need to put a timer. So dash T is the timer. I'm gonna put it down to um, five seconds and it'll take the picture in five seconds. Actually, I'll change it to two. So here we go. One, two, there we go. It took the picture. Takes a little bit of time just to you know convert it, but the resolution is 9,152 by 6,944. And if I go into this folder, if you take a look at the file, 6.9 megabytes for a JPEG. And let's open that up. And that's the picture you get. Now, I am still using a squared resolution. You could adjust the resolution to whatever you want, but yeah, this is through the autofocus and I'm just snapping a picture. Now, if I go into properties, will it tell me? No, it won't tell me. It won't tell me more information than that. So next up, we are going to try the, well, I had it open, but I'm going to try the continuous autofocus. I'm going to show you how it works. So continuous autofocus has, like if I was to put something like this, like pretty close, you see how it like clicks in? And then if I pull it away, it clicks out again. But if I do it like this, it doesn't focus to something here. It'll focus if I'm almost blocking the screen like so. And if I wanted to focus back, well, like I said, this is the, the iffy part. It does work. It does uh, have some knickknacks to it. Now, the next thing they have is uh, something really cool, which is 10 times digital zoom, okay? Um, by using the K option in the terminal, this will give you 10 times zoom or digital zoom. So first, it'll just look like a normal viewfinder. You pop into here. And then if I wanted to go zoom in, I would hit W. Actually, let me shrink this screen so you can see it happen live. So W, enter. Now, I could keep zooming in 10 times. And if I want to zoom out, oops, I, I stopped it. Uh, that was my fault. So let's zoom back in. I could control this left, right if I want to. Up, down, right. Like I could reset the view back to whatever I want. You could actually use the 10 times digital zoom. It's just basically taking the 9,000 megapixels and kind of like cropping it into wherever you need it to. So it, it is pretty good if you want to get into um, zoom mode. So like that's 10 times zoom onto my shirt. And you could see the quality of that. All right. So let's reset that. Now again, I'm just using the viewfinder mode. Um, it's completely different if I start taking a picture and zooming it in, that's completely different. This is only giving me 2000 uh, pixels compared to 9000 pixels when I completely take a photo. Here's the next thing. I have an issue with trying to record video. There is a lot of parameters that you could set on um, recording a video, like exposure, frames. I tried a lot of techniques to try to get this to work perfectly, but I haven't been able to. I don't know why. So here I'm going to record something that is uh, 1080, 9, 1920 by 1080, frame rate at 30, continuous autofocus, and uh, for 10 seconds. And it's going to be using its native format of H.264 instead of uh, Motion JPEG or YUV. So if I hit this, it's going to record the next 10 seconds. Let me show you this. Now, the problem I have with this, I disabled the viewfinder just to make sure that it won't have any distractions. And I'm moving around right now and it cannot keep up with the frame updates. So you can see right here, it's just laggy. Like... I, I don't know what to do with it. I don't know how to get a actual good video with this for now. And I'm pretty sure if I spent time trying to figure out what the per best parameters are, it would help me. But most of their guide that they gave me did not have anything to do with video recording. So this is the guide that you could actually pull off from their website, which is the same guide I'm using. And it'll show you how to install it, uh, what you want to use for continuous autofocus, operating the camera, and all this other stuff. But the thing is, like, don't have anything regards to uh, video. So my thing is when I'm trying to capture video, I don't get the, the frames that I need. It's actually lagging or it's like missed by one frame or two. But if I watch their video, it comes out perfect. So I don't doubt that their video footage is good. I'm just saying like if I was to show you right here, this is their video footage off the camera and it looks so good. 
you know, and then they have uh, this motorcycle that's coming up. It looks so good, but I can't capture the frame rates like this. So I must, must be missing something, but I enjoy installed all the drivers. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If there's anything you want me to test with this guy, let me know down in the comments below. I will be using their 16 megapixel version for my Octopi. So that video would be coming soon as well. And again, anything we talked about in the video will be linked down in the description below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.